Hey everyone, Tony D and Little Joan with a hot take. Um, is Trump a dictator? Now, if you ask anybody who supports Biden or on the left, they say, oh God, yes. Do democracy dies in darkness. Oh my God, he's a dictator. He's not a dictator. Uh, this is footage of a dictator. This is, of course, the footage, the parliament footage of Saddam Hussein purging. Uh, the Iraqi parliament and what he does here is he gets all the parliament guys together and they start uh, you know talking to him praising him basically because they realize that the parliament is surrounded uh, by military guys uh, let's see let's see if we get to that stage yeah the, there's there's military guys <laughs> And, um, uh, and, and Sodom basically drags these guys out one at a time and has them shot. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Uh, while the other guys are left in the room to essentially plead for their lives. And he, he talks about, you know, what they did and all that. And if you, if you listen very closely in this, uh, video, um, you can hear the gunshots in the background. And uh, this is all like nonsense about what these people did, and you know, so one by one, they're they're, they're these guys are taken out and, and 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 executed. I don't even think this is the video now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, so this is more the 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 wind up, but you know, this is something a dictator does. He has people shot because dictators are the ultimate authority. They they control everything. There's no freedom of speech. There's no opposition. <laughs> There's just the dictator and everything goes through him. Um, Trump has all kinds of crazy opposition <laughs> and he doesn't have ultimate control of him, uh, of that. You know, uh, Nancy Pelosi is not on Trump's team at all. Um, she is, she's a brilliant actress, but you know, uh, who, who do you think Trump would trot out and put against the wall first? I mean, there, there's a whole line of candidates, but he doesn't do that because first off, no one would listen to him. Um, and second off, he's not a dictator. Um, now, dictators don't really have, you know, they don't really go through the electri election process uh, in, the, in the classic sense. There's no real opposition in a, a, a dictator's um, a, a election, like Saddam Hussein would hold an election, but it was a total sham, right? He'd get 98% of the vote, and the guy, uh, his opponent, would spend most of the election praising him. Uh, so, you know, and, and, and all the polling places, I mean, you, you, you'd get your hands broken if you didn't vote for Saddam Hussein, right? Nothing like that is happening in the United States. Um, but to to hear people talk about um, Trump and now the Proud Boys online, uh, one person said to me online, uh, you know, I'll have to uh, worry that the Proud Boys are going to be at the voting booth. You know, I, I'm worried that they're going to intimidate me. The Proud Boys haven't even been in the news more than like a few days. And now suddenly they're this massive force that are going to show up at every voting booth. First off, they don't even do that kind of stuff. That's that's something Antifa does, right? Antifa is already known for intimidating people. They intimidate randos on the street. They intimidate people at restaurants. You know, jumping to intimidate people at a polling station, that's not a very big leap for the Antifa guys and the BLM guys. I mean, let's be honest. And that's probably going to happen. Um, you know, I would predict, unless unless things get really locked down in the next couple of weeks uh, with regards to those morons, that you're going to have some problems, probably out west, with uh, BLM and Antifa supporters screaming at people at polling places. And, um, you know, that could be an issue. And, and they should not do that for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's wrong. Uh, but number two, that's incredibly illegal. Oh, boy. Uh, you 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 could go do all kinds of jail time uh, 
to intimidate voters at a voting place, man, if you're convicted of that, goodbye. <laughs> Good, goodbye. Uh, that is not something anyone would tolerate. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure the Democrats wouldn't tolerate that either. Uh, any kind of violence at a polling place, um, not to mention the fact you'll make us look like a third world banana republic by doing that. And that'll be on you, people on the left, because you have still failed to denounce Antifa, BLM, and these extreme leftists. You have not denounced them, uh, which is ironic because, of course, everybody's calling for Trump. Oh, you have to keep, you have to denounce these people. You have to denounce these people every day. Denounce. Um, Ian Miles Chung <laughs> posted a really funny tweet, and it was um, something like, "Have you done your ab abolitions for against racism for the fifth time, or white supremacy for the fifth time?" I thought that was funny. Like, you know, like it's a religion. Like every few hours, you have to say, "I denounce white supremacy. I denounce it. I denounce it." It really has. Um, the BLM Antifa extreme left has become a religion in that respect. But Donald Trump is not a dictator. Um, he has only the power of the presidency, and he's very constrained in that role. Um, you know, the fact that he has to constantly argue and fight with the Democrats to get even things that he has the power over done. You know, you, you, you look at the fight over the wall and the funding for that. I mean, that was a knockdown, drag out fight that he had to keep going to court. And dictators... They have control of the courts, if they even have a court system. Um, you know, they have total control. They, could, they appoint all the judges. Any judges they don't like, well, they meet with a little accident. And surprise, surprise, everything is legal under a dictator because all the judges do what he says. And look, uh, Trump is not the only one in office. The members of the GOP are in office, too. It just so happens that they, after... After working on them, Trump has gained their, uh, I won't say respect, but he's gained their admiration. And they're willing to follow him because he's popular, he's effective, and they're doing things that they want done. So it makes total sense that he has a 95% in-party approval rate. Um, that just means they like him. <laughs> they they like him as much as people on the extreme left hate Donald Trump. So that's part of the reason I think uh, this polarization is quite natural. You know, I've said in the past that, well, you know, I think uh, maybe the deep state is um, polarizing the electorate. I think I still think that's true. I, I, I think they if they if they're not actively doing it, they certainly did it in the beginning. Um but I think it's also a natural reaction to the fact that so many people in the Republican Party now love Donald Trump. It's only natural that people on the other side would hate him even more <laughs> because it frustrates them. They don't love Joe Biden that much. Um, you know, and Joe Biden, certainly not a dictator either. I mean, if he was, he'd just roll in with tanks and that would be the end of it. So, you know, this idea that we have... Oh, we have dictators. We have dictators. Now, that's hyperbolic. I mean, even in the world of libertarianism, you know, we had a lot of that uh, sort of stuff thrown out, uh, that those sorts of words thrown around uh, during the Bush administration. You know, Bush was, I, I wouldn't say he was a dictator, but he did things that were extremely unconstitutional. And, uh, you know, we're still dealing with the fallout from that. Um, and I, yeah, I would say some hyperbolic things about Bush too back in the day, but you know, he, I, you know, if you press me on it and like, well, no, he wasn't a dictator. I do think he stole the election in Florida, but I don't think that makes him a dictator to be a dictator. You'd have to have total control, total control of everything. And, um, Bush certainly didn't. And he left office. He left office after his time, no problem. So will so will Trump. Trump has lot way more reason to leave office than Bush ever did. Look at Bush; he just sits around and <laughs> does horrible paintings, and <laughs> you know everybody dislikes him. The only reason he's 
sort of gotten a little bit of his uh, image back is because so many people on the left hate Donald Trump. They're trying to romanticize the Bush era. Keep in mind that all the people who hate Donald Trump, oh my God, they hated Bush just as much, if not more. Um, but they had a reason to. And then when Barack Obama got elected, all the things that Barack Obama did that were similar to Bush just caused them to go, oh, no, that doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> so, you know, that's just the sad state of partisan politics. You can't mistake partisan politics for dictatorship. There's no partisan politics in a dictatorship. There's only the dicta dictator and people who have to keep their mouths quiet uh, or else they'll be shot. So, you know, once a dictator takes over, most people just sort of go, well, uh, I guess we I guess we can't say anything about him. I guess he's great. Um, and that's not happened with Trump. Uh, there's plenty of opposition. There's plenty of protest in the streets. You know, it's just that people don't want rioting in the streets. You know, nothing nothing's wrong with protests, but, you know, and, and hey, there are very few protests under a dictator because they'll just shoot everybody. They'll just have them all shot or thrown in jail and tortured. And, you know, horrible, you know, they don't have any human rights respect under a dictatorship. So, I mean, these people who call Donald Trump a, a dictator, you know, what they really mean is, A, they don't like Donald Trump. Uh, B, they, they think his policies are bad and they, they wish they could be uh, ruled by the other uh, uh, party. <laughs> and which, by the way, you know, during the Obama administration, it was the exact opposite, right? You had Republicans saying, oh, you know, Obama, he, he, he rules, he's like a commie and blah, blah, blah. And then you'd have people go, oh, you're so silly, Republican. You're so silly. Why would you call Barack Obama that? Why would you make those outrageous compar comparisons, uh, Republicans? Oh, it's outrageous. <laughs> you know, it got so bad. Uh, I, I, you know, I like to discuss politics. Um, a friend of a friend, uh, uh, she didn't like the way I talked about a Barack Obama. And, uh, you know, and doesn't like to talk politics with me. And, hey, I mean, that's... Some people take it a little too too close to heart. You know, in polite conversation, you're not supposed to talk about politics or religion. But um, Donald Trump is not a dictator. Please stop saying he is. Uh, it just makes you look, you know, as a libertarian, sort of standing on the outside of this, it just makes you look silly. It, it, it makes you look, well, if you're going to say he's a dictator, you might as well say he, you know, you could say anything about him. You could say, you know, kicks old ladies down the stairs. I mean, it doesn't matter at that point. You, you've you proven yourself so hyper hyperbolic that, um, you know, whatever else you have to say probably is exaggerated too. And it's like the boy who cried wolf. You keep saying all these outrageous things, then people look at Trump and go, well, he's not that bad. I mean, that's not true. Um, and we've sort of reached that point, right? You know, everything the media says about him now, people just kind of go, oh, yeah, well, that's probably not true. You know, even if you had real evidence that Trump was a Russian stooge or Trump had broken the law, I mean, nobody will care now. You've, you've destroyed your credibility. So stop saying Trump is a dictator and Trump is this and Trump is that. Get yourself together. Embrace yourself. Because Trump is going to be reelected like a normal U.S. president.